so number one the first thing that i must say um really really helped was this couch i love this couch it's an um an ikea couch and because i didn't want to stay in my bedroom the whole time i figured i might as well i had my blanket and everything and this is where i was mostly crying and moaning from <laughs> most of the time but this is not so that's that's how the couch looks like but then this is what you do to like make it make it bigger you pull it out like that i'm using one hand so it's becoming a bit difficult oh, fuck okay let's do it uh pull it out let me just use both hands now because i can't do it with one so, voila it becomes a bed it's a sofa bed it becomes a bed so this was really good because then i had my extension cable um so i had my laptop and i was watching shows and i was lying there and crying most of the time um yeah this is my birthday was two days ago by the way so i'm still holding on to the balloon so don't judge me for that um that helped and then the other thing that really helped was this my mat this yoga mat like there are times when I was just rolling on the floor. Like I just, my body just, it did not want a couch. It wanted to be like right on the floor. So having a mat really, really helped me. And then, um, okay. So apart from that, how else did I prepare? Um, I've written down a list of about nine or 10 things that I did that I found are really helpful for me. Um, and the first one was, um, have if you can and I'm, I'm not talking about a surgical abortion i'm talking about um medical abortion the one that you're given the pill um if you can do it during the day why should you do it during the day just in case anything happens um you can be able to access a hospital easily and also right now with quarantine it's good to just do it during the day because you don't know um how well your abortion is going to go um and another point riding on that is have your doctor on call so let your doctor know exactly what time you're taking the medication so that he or she can take you through it um in case anything goes wrong with it um <clears throat> Also, identify a hospital or a clinic or a medical center that is close to you so that, again, if you need any emergency um, evacuation, you can have it. Actually, when you sign, because before you have the abortion, you have to sign a consent form. On that consent form, they also say in the unlikely event um, that you overbleed or something goes wrong, you need to be ready for an evacuation. Like you need to be ready to be taken to a hospital. So for me, in my previous residence, I would say I was staying next to a very major private hospital in this country. So it was about um, maybe I can say it was about like a five minute drive to the place. So my my plan was because um, I didn't know how everything was going to go. Uh, my plan was especially at night because i didn't know how i was gonna be feeling at night um i had my friend on call so i was like in case anything happens she stays about maybe 10 minutes away from my house or she used to before i moved so i was like in case of anything please be on call because i'm gonna have you're gonna have to drive me to hospital and it didn't matter if it was past curfew or before curfew i was like you have to drive me to hospital that was my first option second was i'll just drive myself if it's not um if i'm not in too much pain i'll just drive myself but then chances are if i'm going to hospital then i'm definitely in too much pain uh, and because of the curfew um there was no the, i didn't have anyone else to keep on call like a taxi guy if i had a taxi guy and there was no curfew then i'd definitely have him on call just in case so this is advice for before curfew and after curfew just have someone on call either someone in your house with you because i was alone i had to call someone to keep them on call um the next one is a um yeah, have a lot of physical space to move around. That's if you have. So if you saw my abortion video and you saw where I did my photo shoot, I used to, that's the front side and I also had a back a backyard kind of place. So I had a lot of space to like move around and walk around. Right now I don't have because I'm living in an apartment. Um, but I'm like, I'm very grateful that I had that kind of space because you go crazy, man. Yeah, I'm telling you, you go crazy. You know the way you see women in labor, the way they act nuts? that's how it was because it's it's labor basically you're in labor but the thing is um it's different in terms of your body was not ready you're the one who forced your baby's not ready body's not ready nothing is ready you basically just bombed your system um so my friend who's already had an abortion and also has kids was like you see that pain that you're feeling yeah when you're in labor when you're actually giving birth that pain will be times 10 
and I was like, what? You mean this pain can get worse than this? <laughs> anyway, that's a story for another day. Um, my next point is um, stock as much food as you can. So for me, I had a lot of sweet stuff. I love. I have a lot of. I had a lot of salty, um, savory stuff. Um, I even bought soda. I don't even drink soda, but I was like. Who knows? Who knows what this baby's gonna want? So I also had soda, I had ice cream, I had red meat, white meat, I had everything in my fridge. Uh, surprise, surprise, I didn't even eat a quarter of that. But because I knew I was gonna be home for the next three days, I didn't want to like order in and all that because just money and all that. So I, um, I stocked everything that I needed, which was great because then anything that I felt like eating, I had it in the fridge. But most of the time I didn't even have the appetite, so... I'm still eating it till now, by the way. Most of that food is still in my fridge. Um, and then the next point is um, have entertainment. So have movies, have series. If you're into reading books, have some books. Just have something that will get your mind off it because there's going to be a lot of just blank spaces in between the pain. There's going to be a lot of blank spaces. So have some entertainment, something to keep your mind off it. Um, another one which is very important as well, um, I expected diarrhea and vomiting. I only had the vomiting, but um, instead of diarrhea, you're going to sit on the toilet a lot because um, of all the bleeding that is going to happen. So have a bucket next to you so that in case you need to vomit, you just vomit inside the bucket. So I had a small bucket and I was seated in the toilet half the time. So um, it was great to have it there. Um, instead of just throwing up in the bathroom and just making everything messy. Also, the bucket, make sure it has a little bit of water ready so that it also doesn't stain um, It doesn't stain the bucket because who knows the time that you're going to be doing the cleaning and the emptying and all of that. Um, oh, and then this final one, which I also found to be very, very important for me, was have some breakfast or have some food, basically, at least one or two hours before your procedure or before you take in your pill reason for that is you're going to have a lot of vomiting actually everyone that i've talked to who's done the pill um way vomited i haven't talked to anyone who hasn't vomited but if you if you won't vomit that's up to you but for from from my own experience but then all these stories are from my own experience um it's good to have some food because um when you start vomiting you're gonna vomit everything and then it will get to a point when you're just vomiting air and for someone who's vomited air before, you know how disgusting that feeling is. So you can imagine you're cramping, you're having pains because you're in the middle of an abortion. Then you're just, you're just like, ah, ah, but nothing is coming out. So it, it, you'd rather have some food in your system so that you can actually be able, when, when it's time to throw up, you actually throw up something. So for me, I threw up everything. I got to the point of now throwing up air. And what helped was I kept drinking water. Because when you drink water, the moment um, it the time comes for you to throw up, you actually throw up some water and not air. Because when, when you're throwing up air, is like, it's a really bad feeling. It's really, really bad. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Um, if you've gone through an abortion before or if you have any tips that could help someone out there who could be going through this traumatic time, please let, let me know in the comments so that someone else, who knows, who knows who could be benefiting from, um, from this from this conversation. If you're watching this on IGTV, please follow, please follow The Grace Cup. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please remember to subscribe and I will see you next time. If you stuck around for the whole of this video, then you get a bonus tip. You get a bonus tip for being um, for being a loyal Sophia. Um, so this final tip is not for everyone, definitely. Really definitely not for everyone. But I found it very, very helpful for me. So if you're into um, unconventional medication, if you're into that, then I can say, for me, it really helped. Like I said in my previous video, I don't know if... Um, if the joint helped me, if the blunt helped me in terms of um, it took the pain away or I was just so stoned that my brain was not focused on the pain. I'm really not sure which is which, but what I can say is that for almost an hour, I felt no pain at all. There was nothing. I was just in my own world. I was floating. Everything was perfect. But now the disadvantage is the moment you high ikishuka. The moment you come back to earth and you stop, you stop being in that highness. The moment you come back to earth, the pain that you will feel, it's almost like it's, it's accumulating. It's almost like it's accumulating. And by the time you come back to earth, it just, it just, it just hits you. Um, but for me, I really found it really, um, good. 
it really really helped me um alleviate the pain alleviate the pain for like an hour because i'm telling you it was so painful to the point where i was crying to god i was like god please just give me one minute's rest just one minute i just need one minute just to breathe it's like it's continuous pain man it's continuous pain i was like could i just get one minute and i think what was consoling me was like maybe this will end at the back of my mind i was like it will end just hold on it will end it will end then it gets to a point i'm like now i'm negotiating with god i'm like okay then give me 30 seconds just give me 30 seconds please give me 30 seconds just give me a break for 30 seconds before we can continue with this pain um so yeah uh, we definitely helped um Again, thank you for watching and for watching all the way to the end and I will see you next time.